Hi, here we are at Stefan's place. It's all empty. He's moved out. He's moved to his new home. And we're here for a few minutes helping to clean up. And behind us is this beautiful Florida jungle right out the window. There's like Spanish moss and swampy stuff and maybe some alligators. <laughs> And I'm here with, um, I'm here with a timer. Now I prefer the little white kitchen timer because that's what my mom used. And since I am spending more time with children these days, yippee, hallelujah, a timer is really helpful because we can do, um, we can do cleanup races on the room, and we can do 15 minutes of special things and we can see how much we can get done. So I just purchased this Taylor kitchen timer and on the package it said that the company has been in business since the 1800s and they make timers and scales. Um, so they're a precision um, measurement company and in some ways remember it is appointed unto human beings once to live and then a measurement and evaluation. So we have to measure our days and plan our days. And this is an introduction to one of the greatest parts of the day. We've got a kitchen timer and we've got fabric. This is the little seats. Uh, this is the little prayer shawl that... Uh, that Deborah Newman, the wise stitching person in the family, uh, helped me make myself. I have a goal to purchase fabric and to make 15 of these to travel with so that wherever we go, everybody's got a piece of fabric. And some people might say, oh, that's silly and that's religious and that's legalistic. And you know what? Check this out. Check this out. My friend, Jesus of Nazareth, right, 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 his blood, his blood, Jesus of Nazareth, 100% man, <laughs> the light's really fun here, 100% man, 100% God, you can't take the God out of Jesus, you can't take the man out of Jesus, my friend, Jesus of Nazareth, his blood, see, they've been taking, <laughs> they've been taking blood out of me to clean it up. Um, my friend Jesus, his blood poured out on the earth on a certain strange day. And when he was crucified, there was a piece of fabric that's five stories tall, six inches wide, and 40, oh, six inches thick, and 48 feet wide. The veil of the temple was torn from the top to the bottom. So we're actually going to get into a time of... 15 minutes of enjoying our surprise language. And I'm going to make a second video after this introduction just for people to join in with because that is a practice for kids and parents and everybody. We have been given a new way to worship 2,000 years ago. The surprise language was hidden from me for 35 years. And if you have a problem with how how excited I am about this, well then g g go away. If you if you think that you you have to talk with the surprise language only if there's interpretation, you're out of context because that's talking about when there's a formal meeting and there's you know new people and et cetera, et cetera and when you're trying to actually listen to the Holy Spirit. Being in the surprise language and enjoying the Holy Spirit is like the greatest form of meditation, joy, yippee thing that you can possibly have. So get yourself a timer. Timer. Get yourself a timer. Get yourself a piece of fabric. And as we're heading in, if you're a male human being, remember that... If you were going into the temple, no women were allowed, and you had to have the hair of your head tightly covered. 
The hair of your head could not be seen when you were in the temple or with, if you're teaching or working or studying or reading the Bible out loud or praying or prophesying. You could not do that. You had to have a symbol of humility to go towards God. Now we have the blood of Jesus, which is invisible, and the man can go boldly straight face to face with God. And because we're respecting the fact that the men are judged more harshly, the women retain the covering on the head and the men use the fabric but keep it on their shoulders. We use the fabric to remind the angels that we remember that God made the first fabric. He made the first covering. <laughs> he made the first clothes. He, Jesus killed a couple of animals to cover up Adam and Eve's body and he told the Israelites to put little fringes on the ends of their four-cornered pr garment prayer blankets. And a lot of other things happened with fabric. The lady who was having terrible sicknesses actually grabbed Jesus' fringes and she was healed. And later on, Peter's shadow was actually healing people as he went by. And pieces of fabric that were sent out from the apostles were healing people as well. So God cares about fabric and the angels are watching. This is actually a, a sign to the ones that are right around us. And if you haven't really felt and understood that there's an enormously active spirit realm around us, then you know putting fabric on to enjoy God's presence might seem like a really ridiculous thing. It's not something that you have to do all the time, but man, when we get together in special times, it's special and good. So check out the next video, which is 15 minute group prayer and celebration in the surprise language. It's a thank you time, a thank you time.